guys, Kevin Elizabeth, a wedding photographer and bridal boutique owner based in San Diego. And today I'm going to be talking about what you can slash should wear under your wedding dress, as well as a couple of things to consider for your wedding shoes. I had somebody request that I make a video about what to wear underneath your wedding dress. And this part, I mean, it's gonna be really short. There's not a whole lot to say. So usually with wedding dresses, you are not going to wear a bra under the dress. Your dress will have enough support or it should have enough support that you don't need to wear a bra in it. Or you can have cups added in alterations to the dress to give you that bra effect. So hopefully you're not going to have to wear an actual bra on the wedding day. Your gown should just be fitted perfectly to your body and hold you in place, should have enough structure in the dress to keep everything in place. Now some people have very small chests or just like to let them hang in like a really silky dress with no cups, that's totally fine. But for those of you who are like, should I be wearing my bra? Probably not. Just make sure your dress has everything built in that you need so that you can go braless and be more comfortable on your wedding day. In terms of underwear, some people will go commando. I don't like the feeling of that, so I just wore a thong under my wedding dress. That was what was comfortable for me. I had an A-line, so I had enough tool. You weren't gonna see a panty line anyway. I probably could have worn granny panties and nobody would have known. Um, but for your dress, make sure that you try it on with the kind of underwear you think you're gonna wear. Look how it looks in pictures. Have somebody take pictures of you outside and inside. Make sure you can't see a panty line that's going to bother you. I would definitely strongly encourage wearing nude underwear. Don't wear a black thong or black underwear under a white dress. Like it might have a chance of showing through and you don't want that. It's not gonna look good in pictures. So make sure that you're checking for the see-throughness of your dress. Can you see this underwear underneath it? And can you see the panty line? You don't really want either of those things showing up in your wedding dress or jumpsuit or whatever you're wearing. Find something that is going to work or if you have to just go commando I don't know I wouldn't do it but some people are really comfortable with that and they would totally go for it as far as like stockings I would say a hard pass on those you don't need to be wearing tights under your wedding dress I don't really know if anybody does but I thought I'd bring it up just in case um, some people will wear a garter under their wedding dress I didn't want to do a garter toss so I didn't feel the need to wear a garter. If you do want to do a garter toss, you can wear the garter all day. Some people wear two, one that's like a day one and like that stays on all day. And then a tossing one might be a little bit cheaper. That one goes home with whoever catches it. I'm not a huge fan of the garter toss. I find them a little bit uncomfortable. They're just a little bit too sexual for me sometimes. And so it can be strange, but if that's something that you want to do, go for it. You can literally put it on right before the toss. So you're not wearing it all day personal preference if you want to have it on your body all day or not. So those are the things that you would probably be wearing underneath your dress. Maybe also some spanks if you want something to really hug you in. Um, some dresses you're going to be able to get away with spanks, some you aren't. You will have to find ones that are cut properly. Some you could get them that like come all the way up under your chest. Some you could just get like lower body. Find something that you find is comfortable and that you can't see through your dress. Um, but Spanx are not a requirement. You don't have to wear them, but I know a lot of people do talk about them. Okay, that's pretty much everything I can think of that you would wear underneath your wedding dress. The last portion of this video, I wanna talk all about some tips for shoes. If you are going to be getting married somewhere that has grass, that a stiletto heel would sink into, you have two options. Your first option is to not wear a stiletto heel and instead opt for a block heel or flats, or even a platform sneaker. Those are gonna be your best choices for that scenario. Or if you do wanna wear your stiletto heels, buy heel stoppers. There's, I think that's one brand, but they basically are little rubber clear things that go on the actual heel itself and they prevent you from sinking into the ground. I wore them on my wedding day, worked out great because we had a lot of grass all over our venue. Um, make sure that you don't put those on your shoes until you're ready to wear them or hopefully your photographer is not going to photograph your shoes with the heel stoppers on them. Like they'll take it off, they'll put it back on, whatever. You just don't want those in your pictures. But when you're wearing your dress and walking around, no one's gonna see that. It's just the pictures of like your shoes by themselves that people don't wanna see your heel stoppers. So those are like advices for the heel types that you might want to wear depending on the environment of your venue. The second one is to make sure that you break in your shoes. And this is going to be done to make sure that they're more comfortable on the wedding day itself. 
but it's really important that when you are breaking in your shoes that you wear them with socks so that you're not gonna get them dirty, they'll still look pristine for your pictures, and wear them on carpet. So walk around on carpet, something that's clean so the soles aren't gonna get that dirty. Again, this is for pictures. If you do get your soles super dirty, if I saw that as a photographer, I would just shoot the shoes like top down. I wouldn't really lay them on their side or anything like that. The bottom is not a big of a deal, but if you've got like toe dirt stains from not wearing socks while breaking them in, that's not as cute. And your photographer might not take the time to Photoshop that and they don't really have to because that's not considered a typical edit. So that's something to keep in mind is just protect the shoe while you're breaking them in. And the third one is that if you are going to be not able to make it through those shoes the entire wedding day that you are telling your seamstress in alterations, I'm gonna wear these and then I'm gonna change into these shoes later. If you are going to be changing into a heel that is shorter, make sure that your dress is hemmed appropriately so that you're not gonna be stepping on your dress in those shorter shoes because your dress was altered for a taller heel and thus was longer. So that is a conversation you need to have. If you're going from like, five inch heels to two inch heels is probably gonna make a difference. If you're going from like three inch to two inch or two inch to one inch, I don't know. It's not gonna be as big of a deal, but that is something that you do need to consider is you don't wanna be stepping on your dress during the reception because your reception shoes are much shorter. My last tip for shoes is just, I don't know, it's, it's a little mental game you can play with yourself. If you are going to be buying some shoes that are not like so bridal that they can only be worn on the wedding day, then you could consider that a life budget and not a wedding budget option because it's not just for your wedding day. I have blue suede shoes that I wore to my wedding and I could wear that with jeans, I could wear that with a dress, I can wear it the rest of my life because they're not so excessively bridal that it would be weird to wear them going out and about. So if you are able to justify purchasing a nicer pair of shoes for your wedding day because you can wear them for the rest of your life at many different events, then go for it. That's just my encouragement to you. Shoes can be super fun. Um, for wedding day shoes, I love Bella Bell shoes and I actually do wear some of their white flats for just everyday type stuff. They look really cute with jeans, they look cute with dresses. We do sell those at my boutique, the White Flower Bridal Boutique in San Diego, if you wanna come check them out. But I do love their shoes. I see a lot of brides wearing Badgley Mishka. Those typically do seem a little bit more weddingy and formal as opposed to some other shoes I've seen. You can never really go wrong with a nude color or a champagne color that can go with different kinds of shoes. If you wanna wear a black pair of heels on your wedding day, that is awesome, that's really cool. You can obviously wear those to any sort of event whatsoever. But yeah, just a fun little thing to like, I don't know, if you wanna spend more than you were thinking, like it's for your life, it's not just for your wedding. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was really short, simple, and sweet, but there's not a whole lot to say when it comes to what to wear under your dress and then the couple little shoe tips I gave. If you are new, please subscribe and I will see you guys next week. Bye!